Okay, so let's go through the question number one here. Define the following terms with the use of examples. A lot of students always forget that bit to support your answers. Now we've got amphoteric and amphiprotic. Often they are confused. However, the hint is is protic. So this one is you're looking for protons in the actual formula, and it acts like an acid or a base. However, amphoteric is neither an acid or a base, but it just reacts with what it's been given. Now a classic example of that one is zinc oxide. So zinc oxide can react with hydrogen ions and it will neutralize the oxide to form water and produce or release the zinc ions. However, zinc oxide can also react with a hydroxyl unit, so reacting with a base. You need some water to go with that one, and it will form the zincate ion. So therefore, acting neither as an acid or a base, but when you give it an acid and base to react with, it a reaction is undertaken. Okay, so let's get back to amphiprotic. So that means it can act as an acid or a base. So more or less you're looking at chemicals that have already released, undergone one ionization so if I use um, hydrogen carbonate as an example, that can release one more hydrogen ion and form the carbonate ion. However, the hydrogen carbonate can accept a hydrogen ion and form back to the molecular as, um, carbonic acid. So here it's releasing, so therefore it's behaving like an acid. Here it's accepting a hydrogen ion, so therefore it's acting as a base. Okay, let's go on. Triprotic means it will release three hydrogen ions. And the classic example of that one is phosphoric acid. Now a weak acid is an acid that doesn't fully ionize. So if I put in one mole of an acid, I'm not going to get one mole of hydrogen ions. Okay? Um, so it might be something like 0.1, only 10% of it will ionize. So And of course, doesn't fully ionize in water as water is the solvent. And anything organic is usually a weak acid. Now, ionization, that's when we actually form ions that weren't there in the first place. So, if you have a covalent molecular compound, there are no ions, but when you dis um, dissolve it into water, it actually produces hydrogen ions. Okay, so here's my example. So carbon dioxide, that is molecular carvalent. There are no cations or anions. Water is also molecular covalent, no cations or anions. However, now we do have an ion and we have an ion. So they were not present as a reactant, but they're now present in a product. A base is anything that's a proton acceptor. And examples would be the oxide ion, hydroxide ion, um, carbonate ion, 
hydrogen, carbonate, iron. Okay. And of course there are many more bases out there. Right, balance the equations for the following. So if we've got to make sure you under remember what the formula are. So phosphoric acid, HPO4, plus sodium carbonate. Now carbonate's double negative, sodium single positive. So make sure you've got the formulas right. So an acid plus a base gives you a salt. Now it's going to be sodium phosphate. Might be good if I draw the formula properly. Okay, phosphate's triple negative, sodium's po um, single positive, so therefore I need three of those. And a water. And because it's a carbonate, we're also going to get some bubbles. Okay, so now we need to balance this. Now the key thing here is to look for patterns. I've got three sodiums and two sodiums. So a common factor is going to be six. So three twos are six, two threes are six. Now I've got two phosphates, so I'll need two phosphates. Um, I've got three carbonates, so I'll need three carbonates there. And I've got six hydrogens there, so three twos are six. And they're combining with the oxygen from the carbonate, so three oxygens there. Remember, we leave the phosphate and the oxygens all as a group because they're a polyatomic anion. So nitric acid is HNO3. You just have to remember those. Plus aluminium, so metal plus an acid is going to give us hydrogen gas plus the salt, so aluminium nitrate. Nitrate is single negative, so I'll need three of those. All right, so let's actually do some balancing here. Always leave the metal to last. These ones here, you can, or this one here, you can stick any number in front of it. Okay, so I need three nitrates, so I'll put three nitrates there. That three hydrogens going to one and a half times two is three, and I've got one aluminium there. Now we cannot leave, or we can't have half a molecule, so we're going to double everything. So that's going to be three, that's going to be two, three twos is six, and two. Now everything's balanced, and they're all whole numbers. Acetic acid added to rust, okay, iron three oxide, so iron three oxide, So iron, three oxide, plus acetic acid, CH3COOH. Remember that hydrogen is the only hydrogen that's being released as a proton donator. Um, oxygen is always minus two, unless it's with a peroxide, which it's not. So, um, and that one is iron three. So two lots of three positive charges and three lots of two negative charges. It balances out. Alright, so an acid plus a base is going to give me water plus the salt. So it's iron 3 acetate. And that has a single negative charge, so I'll need three of them to balance the three positive charges. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. I've got two ions here, I'll need two ions there. That then gives me two lots of three, six acids and water i've got three oxygens there so three oxygen there three twos are six six hydrogen that's all balanced all right going on to question number three here negative what uh, define the ph scale so therefore we're just looking at the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration remember that needs to be expressed in moles per liter Calculate the pH of hydrogen, uh, hydrochloric acid with the following concentration. So we just do simply negative log of 3 times 10 power of minus 2. And that will give us a pH of 1.5. 
Calculate the molar concentration of sulfuric acid with a pH of 5. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. So the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to 10 to the power of minus 5. So we're just doing the opposite of a log, which is raising it to um, a power. Now, here's the trick. Sulfuric acid when you chuck it in water is going to ionize and release two hydrogen ions and the sulfate ion. So the ratio here is 1 to 2 so it actually gets smaller so I used that fraction there. So the actual concentration is going to be 10 to power minus 5 actual concentration is going to be 10 to the power of minus 5 divided by 2 and when we plug that into the calculator it's going to be 5 times 10 to the power of minus 4 molar or moles per litre copper oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce copper chloride and water okay so um, Copper oxide plus hydrochloric acid plus hydrochloric acid gives me water and the salt. So I've got copper chloride, it's copper 2 chloride, so that's plus 2. Chloride's in group 7, so it's negative 1, so I might need to make sure I've got two of those. And of course, I'll need to make sure that everything's balanced put a 2 there, so 2 chlorines, 1 copper, 1 water, 2 hydrogens, 2 hydrogens. Ok, so which one was the acid? So that one's fairly straightforward, hydrochloric acid, the base was the copper oxide. Now if you want to identify the conjugate acid, that's when we start looking at the reaction going in reverse. So which one of these two can release a hydrogen ion? Well, there's no hydrogens here, so it has to be water. And the conjugate base is the chloride because the hydrogen will go onto the chloride to re reform hydrochloric acid. So chloride acting as the proton acceptor is the conjugate base. Number five, what is the mass of sodium carbonate present at 300 mils of 0 0.005 molar sodium carbonate? So if I'm going to be working out the mass, I need to know the relative molecular weight of sodium carbonate. So um, that's going to be two lots of sodium, so that's 22.99 times 2 plus carbon, which is 12.01 plus three lots of oxygen. And that gives us a relative molecular weight of 105.99. Okay, so now we need to work out the moles. So I've got volume and I've got concentration. So concentration equals moles divided by volume. Moles is equal to concentration times volume. So the moles is going to be equal to 0 0.005 times by the 300 mils, which we express in litres, so it's 0.3 and that will give me 1.5 times 10 to the power of minus 3 moles. Now to work out the mass, mass is equal to moles times by the relative molecular weight, mass is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the power of minus 3 times by 105.99, so that's what we worked out here. So mass is going to be equal to 0 0.159 grams. Don't forget your units. Express your answer in percentage mass per volume or per percentage weight per volume. So just to go through, that's actually equal to 1 gram per 100 mils. Alright. So what I actually, what, what we actually have here is 
um, 0 0.159 grams in 300 mils. So we're still dealing with lots of 100 mils there. So that gives us, oh, times it by 100 to make it a fancy percentage. Times by 100 to give it as a percentage. So that's 0.53 percent. Parts per million is actually how many milligrams per litre. So to change grams into milligrams, I'm going to times to change grams into milligrams, I times it by a thousand. So 0 0.159 times by a thousand. And I divide it by the litres, um, which is actually 0 0.300 litres. And that will give me a parts per million of 530. Okay, question number six. Solutions of sodium hydroxide were titrated. Titrated amounts were um, the following. Name the equipment to use to titre the sodium hydroxide. Well, as you can see here, they're all different values. So you can't achieve that with the volumetric pipette, so therefore you did that with the burette. How would I actually prepare the burette? Well, first, you're going to rinse it with the solution. So first you're going to rinse it with the water. Then you're going to rinse it with the sodium hydroxide or the solution that you're using and then finally you will fill it with the solution to displace any water so therefore your concentration hasn't been diluted. Why were four uh, titrations performed? Okay so more or less if we got any random errors we can actually reduce them or actually exclude them so you can identify it. And this is a brief answer because you've only got one mark there. Calculate the explain, uh, calculate and explain the average volume you'd use in these calculations. All right, so you got four to choose from. This one is looking a bit too high. Okay, so it's actually out by 0.6 when you compare it to this value here. So that one's an outlier. I wouldn't actually use it. So I would use 29.9, 29.6, and 29.8. Some would actually argue that you'd, you wouldn't even use this one, 29.6, because it's not within 0.1 mil of each other. So that would also be an acceptable answer. Divided by 3 to get out your average, so therefore... That looks at 29.76 reoccurring, so I would actually use 29.8. Okay. If you did 29.9 and 29.8, you divide by 2, you would exclude it, and that would also be quite satisfactory. All right, so let's get on to the big one here. Calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid sample. So let's write the equation. So sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide will give me water and the salt. Now sulfate is double negative, sodium single positive, so I need two for every one of those. Let's go to balance this one. So two there, two there. Um, I've got now two oxygens, two oxygens, two hydrogens plus the two hydrogens there which equals 4, so that's all balanced. Alright, working in columns, so concentration here was 0 0.02 molar and the volume was um, 29.8
mils from working out the averages. So moles is equal to concentration times volume. So that's going to be 0.02 times 0, 0.0298. Remember that must be expressed in litres. So moles is going to be equal to 5.96 times 10 power minus 4. Um, it doesn't matter if you write it all, just point zero 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 etc. I just find it's less writing and it's a little bit easier to understand. Alright, so now I want to go over to this column and work out the moles of sulfuric acid I reacted. So this goes from a 2 to 1, so therefore I'm going to multiply it by half ratio. So 5.96 divided by 2, 5.96 times 10 power. Divide that by 2, so the moles is going to equal to 2.98 times 10 to the power of minus 4. Now, concentration is equal to moles divided by volume. Now, the volume was the transfer using a 20 mil volumetric pipette. So, the concentration is going to be 2.98 times 10 to the power of minus 4 divided by that 20 mil volumetric pipette. So the concentration is going to be 1.49 times 10 power of minus 2 molar or moles per litre. Alright, so we've got a solubility graph here. It looks complicated, um, but more or less you just drown out the, the information that you don't need. So let's go to the question. State the compound that is most soluble at 15 degrees. Alright, so here's 15 degrees. So which one has the highest solubility? It's going to be potassium iodide. That's there. What mass of solute will dissolve in 100 mils of looks like I've got a bit of a typo there, for the following temperatures. So potassium nitrate at 50 degrees. So we're going to look for potassium nitrate. Here's 50 degrees. We'll follow it all the way up. And then we'll go across and you can see we've got 80. And of course, don't forget the units. Sodium chloride at 0 degrees. Here's sodium chloride. One thing interesting about sodium chloride, how much you dissolve into the water, doesn't um, really get affected by temperature. However, the rate in which it dissolves is affected by temperature. A lot of people get that messed up. Okay, so zero degrees, we're looking at that point there. A little bit over 35, so I'd probably go maybe 37, to 37 grams. Okay, last question here. This one's a bit of a trick question because it's actually looking at 200 mils and you're only provided as 100 mils. So look at the ammonium chloride solution from 90 to 50 degrees. All right, so let's find ammonium chloride. Um, here's 90. So at 90 degrees, 70 grams will dissolve at, per 100 mil of solution. And then if I look at 50, 50 grams. All right. So let's just put that. Because we've got 200 mils, double the amount. So 70 grams times 2 is going to give me 140 grams. And that was at 90 degrees. And that's with 200 mils of water. And then the other temperature was 50 grams per 100 mil. But we've got 200 mils, so we times it. And that's going to be equal to. 100 grams and that's at 50 degrees and that was with 200 mils of water so as you cool it down the maximum holder capacity goes from 140 to 100 grams so therefore 40 grams so you subtract the two will precipitate out and that's it